Hi, welcome to Tessera's Nerf Room. So it is violently raining outside right now, so I apologize if there's an extreme amount of background noise. There's really nothing I can do about that, and I just wanted to fill a video today. And today we're going to be taking a look at a blaster that I've been wanting to cover on this channel for an extremely long time because it is a very personal blaster to me that I got a un ungodly amount of enjoyment out of when it first came out. And unfortunately, it hasn't really stood up over the years, but I still love it anyways. A blaster that not only managed to be interesting right out of the box, but seemed to be a direct sequel to one of the most well-known blasters of all time, the Vulcan EBF-25. I'm of course talking about the Elite Rhino Fire, and this is quite a blaster and a half. Let's get into it. <laughs> Is a 2014 release out of the Elite series, and it released to not very much praise, mainly because the blaster was $100 when it first came out, and it was quite expensive. It was, I think, the most expensive Nerf blaster that was released at the time of its release. But the thing about this blaster is that the one that I'm holding right here is the first gen version. But this isn't the blaster that most people have. Most people's Rhino Fires would be white with blue details instead of the other way around. The thing about that version is that it was all over the place. The second gen white versions you can find at Toys R Us, you can find those at Target, you can find those at Walmart, you can find those all over the place. But the original blue first gen versions were exclusive to Costco from everything I can see. And originally they came with four magazines instead of just two and a hundred darts. I don't know, but I'm pretty sure that was the case, and they were in pretty limited run, so this blaster right here is actually rather hard to find. But the internals are exactly the same, so I'm going to treat it exactly the same. With all that said, let's start with the design. This blaster has stood up over the years as one of the most iconic and recognizable designs in the Elite series because it is completely different than anything else I've ever seen in my entire life. It looks like a giant plus sign, and when you look at it from the front, it looks like an airplane of sorts. This thing looks insane in person, and it is just ridiculous. Even without the two magazines in it, it still has quite an appearance to it. And it is a very impressive looking blaster, very impressive looking blaster, just in general. The details on this blaster are very cool looking. It looks like some sort of pseudo jet engine, and this is actually like a thing. This is part of the mechanism that just has more details on it for the sake of there being details. You remember how I love the, uh, the Hornet and the Titan ASV-1 for having all of those silver details? They're back, and they look just as good on this one, if not even better, because it literally is a whole bunch of tubes and stuff, like going into carburetors and stuff like that. It looks insane, and all these details are on both sides. This was back in the day where Hasbro painted both of their blasters, or they painted blasters on both sides, and I gotta say, the Rhino Fire looks really good. Let's talk about the ergonomics. This is kind of where uh, this thing falls apart a little bit, because this grip... What? It looks like a game controller. It really does. It looks like some form of game controller, and it doesn't feel very good. The individual grips are extremely thin and not very good feeling, and they almost did a nice finger troil, except for the sharpness of the front of the grip. It feels very weird. And they almost have this strange choil for the webbing of your thumb, and it feels really weird. Like, it works. It definitely works okay. I, I just kind of want to do this out of instinct, but, like, you're supposed to hold it like this. This is weird. This feels weird. Both of these grips aren't the worst things in the world, but they're definitely not good. And then you're supposed to put both of your thumbs up on here. Like, it genuinely feels like a game controller when you're holding this thing. But when you actually use this blaster handheld, it does provide a foregrip, which is this thing right up here. And it fails catastrophically. It is very small. There is barely enough room for me to get my four fingers in there, and it is real tight because it's up underneath the front of the tactical rail. So my middle finger is pressing up against the tactical rail, and my other three fingers are like curled up around it, so I have to unironically flip this blaster off while I'm holding it like this which feels very, very wrong, especially because my relatively small finger is getting smushed up in there. So I do not recommend using the dedicated foregrip. I instead recommend doing this. You take your hand and you wrap it underneath the carry handle and you hold it like this. 
Yes, it doesn't feel the best, but it feels a whole heck of a lot better than using the dedicated foregrip. Now, this is a little bit better if you were to brace the other grip against your hip like this. So you have the blaster braced against your hip and then you just hold on to it like this. This is not too bad. But if you want actual decent ergonomics, I prefer to hold it like this at an angle. I can't believe I've had to go on with ergonomics. Also, holding it up sideways like this also helps, and that actually decreases the size of it. I'm just giving you guys tips for how to hold this thing at this point, because this is a very weird blaster, and you can't hold it conventionally, so it's only fair. But how does this blaster work? Well, it is a magazine-fed flywheeler, so you load up the two drums that it comes with, you put them in the mag wells, and then you pull down this trigger halfway to rev and all the way down to fire, and it's fully automatic. And that's awesome. That's why I love this blaster so much. It does that. These barrels are connected to the rotary pusher back here and they pop back and forth every time a dart fires. And because it's actually connected to the pusher mechanism, that means every single time this pops forward, a dart simultaneously comes out. So it isn't just a random detail like the Titan CS50 spinning barrel has, it actually is the performance and rate of fire out of the blaster. The rate of which these move back and forth directly indicates how fast the blaster fires, which is a little bit faster than the rapid strike, but not like hyper fire speeds or anything. And it looks fantastic. Let's talk about the triggers. This blaster has this giant thumb button and these two mag releases on the sides. The thumb button works, but it could definitely be better. The spring load here is very heavy. You have to really press down on it in order to get that trigger down. That is honestly good so that you don't, well, you don't accidentally push it down just by dropping anything on the blaster, but it is definitely worth noting. And it is a lot better if you use both hands to do that. As for the mag releases, they are standard mag releases that have quite a bit of click to them. So you push it in and it pops quite nicely. I think you just pull the mag out and it is identical on the other side. Not much to note there. Mag insertion and release is very, very smooth. Holy crap, this is one of the best mag releases and mag wells that I've ever seen. And it feels fantastic, especially when you put the tripod on it and you have it sitting down and then you can just do this. And just put some more in like this. Oh man, it's quite fun. Let's show you guys a firing demo. So a couple things to note here. It is very old and so the pusher mechanism gets a little bit squeaky when you get close to emptying the magazines. I've tried this in several other magazines and it seems only to happen with these ones that it comes with, but I digress. What do I think of the Rhino Fire and do I think that the overall hatred for this blaster and the consensus that this is one of the worst elite blasters is true? Kind of? But honestly, I love this thing. It has personality and it is fun. Whether you agree with the statement that this is a good or bad blaster, you gotta admit, it is fun to watch this thing smash out 50 darts without failing, and that is kind of rare considering that it has notoriously bad magazines. I can't believe these magazines didn't fail. I have two extra magazines that I was going to use as backups in case these ones kept failing, but it actually worked really well, so I'm pleasantly surprised. But the blaster shoots everywhere except straight. This is one thing to note. The darts out of the right barrel lean left and the darts out of the left barrel lean right. So it kind of shoots in an X shape and it is a lot more prevalent when you shoot it from a longer distance rather than just from this side of the room to that side of the room. Honestly, it was pretty accurate right in here. I did get some squibs and some cases of darts just kind of flying all over the place, but for the most part, it was shooting pretty accurately. And I would honestly say that the performance out of this would be serviceable in a regular Nerf war. 
I think the Rhino Fire is awesome. It definitely isn't the best thing ever, but I wouldn't say it's the worst. I don't think I would consider this blaster necessarily bad, but I also can't really recommend it unless this is specifically what you want. It definitely fits the heavy gunner style, but there are just way better heavy gunner blasters out there. And I can understand why this blaster was forgotten in the Vulcan Shadow and never really lived up to it nor did it live up to any of the other heavy gunner blasters that would come out over the years. Hence the uh, Macedon, the Prometheus. Yeah, those are just honestly better heavy gunner blasters than this is, but I love this blaster anyway, because to this day, it is still the only nerf turret gun. And it does come with a tripod that I can't find anywhere, which is why I didn't showcase it in this video, but it's a tripod, you clip it on, and then you can put it on tables. It only sits about this high, so you can't really do much with it. That's besides the point. If you do want to get this blaster, I would recommend taking a look at Blaster Barn or eBay. I'm not sure if they have them at Blaster Barn, but I know that you can get this blaster on eBay for relatively cheap, and I do think that it is a find that might be worth taking a look at. Though not if you're into modding, because uh, it has quite an interesting motor setup in the front. I might make a video all about how terrifying this thing is to mod in the future, but I don't know. That might be future me's problem to figure out. With all that said, thanks for watching. Bye.